I was always drawing when I was a kid. In my preteens, I think I was about 10 or 12, 12 maybe, uh, my parents um, let me go to the Edmonton Art Gallery and um, I took art classes there. And it was then at the gallery that I actually did see some original paintings and some were of the Group of Seven, as a matter of fact. So I was always really interested in art, but that was my only contact. Didn't go to university. I elected to go to the um, Alberta College of Art in Calgary, which we lived in Edmonton, but I went to Calgary to go there because I wanted a studio program of some kind. And I was really, really interested in painting. And so I decided that I wanted to switch from commercial art to fine art so I could learn how to paint. And that was my, uh, my start. It still it, is. With the Group of Seven, I, I've ended up being a landscape painter. And, and I think probably because of them, the kind of uh, landscapes that I do are not like what the Group of Seven d have done. But when I go to a place, I generally look at the landscape. What I try to do is um, create more of a feeling of a place rather than actually documenting it in that way. So it can, it can become something else. It can become ideal landscape in a way. Well, very traditional materials. I'm a, an oil painter, so I use oil paint. And I work in a very traditional manner. So when I'm painting, uh, basically I'm using charcoal. I work on canvas, gessoed canvas. Sometimes I will use um, wood panels, but more and more I've been using gessoed canvas because it's a lot lighter for me to move around, especially if I'm working on large scale. But for this exhibition, um, I'm, I'm using acrylic paint. I have never used acrylic paint. I started uh, trying it out um, for this project, um, from the Haida Gwaii project, because I needed to have paintings done quicker. So I had to start uh, figuring out how to work with acrylic paint. I'm still working in that same traditional manner of working. But with the acrylic paints, I have the advantage of things drying a lot faster. And that, that can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing when I'm trying to do some blending. So I have to add the, the slow drying mediums to the, to the paint in order for me to be able to, to do that. I work in a very traditional manner. So I work with um, charcoal drawing on the canvas. I will have sketches from some of my photographs because I now have moved more into photographing the landscape rather than actually sitting there and drawing it. And I will take, do some drawings from those photographs, sometimes combining various photographs to, to create another image. And um, when I start to paint, I paint in a very traditional manner. Uh, I do an underpainting with um, thinned paint and then work into a second layer where I'm uh, blocking in the lights and the darks. And so then I will do, um, on top of this second layer uh, of the paint, I will then start doing glazing and then final highlights and a little bit more in pasto paint. So it's a very slow layered process, which is quite a traditional manner way of working. Of course, everybody's going to take away something completely different than, than my impressions. But when I was up in Haida Gwaii for my two-week artist residency program there, the reason, the purpose of, of them inviting artists up there is to familiarize themselves with the Haida culture, but also Guayanas, which is the, um, the national park up there. What I was trying to do with this, with this work, which is one large painting installation made up of nine paintings and five mortuary poles, is to create, um, it's almost like standing in front of a scene. I was trying to create a sense of space for these people, people that would come in there that they could almost feel if they stand close enough to it that they have been, they're in the landscape, they're in the space. Uh, now it is not 
as 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 they will see, it is not a, a um, realistic landscape in the sense that it's all the perspective is there uh, as it should be. I've created lots of different ways of seeing things, but I'm trying to give the viewer my feelings about the place, what I felt in my, my, my mind physically. I wanted to create that, so that's what I did. And I'm hoping when people stand there, they will get that same feeling, the feeling of, wow, what an amazing place, what an amazing culture. They are all um, on Skungwai, they're at Skungwai, and they're all still standing. The mortuary poles, of course, are basically um, poles that are created to inter important people in the village. And uh, they stand, generally speaking, um, alone. They stand alone, generally speaking, in front of the home, but not touching the home, but in front. And the remains of the person who has, is deceased is put into the, uh, a small bentwood box and attached to the top of the mortuary pole. And they remain there, that that is like their graves. And, and uh, they are, the idea is, is that the spirit never leaves the place. The idea of the mortuary poles in this painting installation is that they are there as spirits and protectors of this sacred sites. That's why I've, I've used them. And I've taken uh, the creative, um, artistic creation, or creativity, I guess, or placing them into very different spaces than where they actually are in Skangwai. So I try to be, with, with all of those mortuary poles, they are as close to the reality of the poles as I could get them when I, when I was painting them. I haven't, I haven't changed them in any way. The changes, uh, of course, over time come with, with, you know, their exposure to the elements. And also, m all the bentwood boxes have, been re have long been removed or deteriorated. And so now the, the poles become nurse logs. So there, there's salal bushes and other things growing out of the top of them. They're quite, quite lovely pieces, really.